in this grade 12 economics video we are going to be looking at our march test scope so basically what you're going to expect out of your tests that are coming up this march we are going to be looking at the text structure of your march test because it's definitely going to be different from your prelim preliminary or your final examination as you may remember it from grade 12. we are going to go through it looking at a past papers to see how uh, the layout of the test itself looks like so let's start with our text structure that when you open up your question paper what is going to be the layout of your question paper so in your question paper you are going to find five questions meaning question one up to question five obviously these questions are divided or are classified into sections so you are going to have to pay careful attention as to the instructions of each section all ex sections are answered um differently so it's very important that you read all of your instructions don't jump into just answering the questions because even though your question paper has five questions it doesn't mean that you have to answer five all five of the questions you are going to get to points where you have to pick and choose the questions that you are going to answer the main aim is for you to work out of 150 marks so if you find if your paper is out of 150 it means you're going to answer three questions of 50 marks each so you have to pay careful attention to the mark allocation of your paper and what is required from you so out of the five questions if you answered everything that would definitely be more than 150 that would be 250 marks but what you are looking to work for is 150 marks so that means you need to answer three questions out of the five but there are instructions as to how you choose those five questions those three questions out of five that you're going to answer so it becomes very 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 important for you to read these instructions at the beginning of each section so let's start with our section a our section a all of in is made up of one question and it is question one and that question one is compulsory now the confusion here may be that those questions in questions one may look different because it comes off in dim different formats there's a multiple choice there's a machine column there is a filling in the missing word or uh, determining the term that is used or the concepts so because they are different people may think they are different uh, questions they are not different questions it's 1.1 and 1.2 and 1.3 they just happen to be in different formats they also in question one that is uh, in section a which only consists of question one that's why the whole section is compulsory because it is only one question so that's why it is compulsory you are not choosing between two questions section a is always question one so in that same question you are also going to notice that it it's going to be a different uh, types of topics it's not going to be just classified to one sub uh, to one main topic it's going to be a different things that you would have covered as far as term one has been concerned we are going to look in the next chapter as to what are the topics that you're going to see in there but just know that in section a everything is going to be in there then in section b and c that's where you choose one question each that means in total you will have answered again three questions out of the five so in section b and section a see that's where you only choose one question so let's look at the test scope meaning the topics that you are going to find in your question paper especially when you're looking at section a that we said is compulsory meaning that it covers literally everything that you would have done in term one now for you for the purposes of you and me in this channel i have posted a video on every single topic that we are concerned with in term one now in these videos i have covered what is mostly important for you to know now there are some things that we did not get to but if you have studied with these videos there is no way that you will fail your paper 
So first video that we looked into or the first topic that we looked into was the topic of the circular flow model. If you are able to uh, explain your circular flow model and you understand the topic of a circular flow model, there isn't a question on a circular flow model that should then be hard for you to answer. If you understood what we are talking about, there is a question that we answered in there as well as on that video. I have attached a link to the description box of that video to the um the question paper as well as the um, mind the gap notes you can also find mind the gap notes on the internet just google uh, mind the gap economics grade 12 it should be in a downloadable form for you to study that if you don't have your test books if you have a test book regardless of what test book it is just look in your table of content for the page on a circular flow model and use that to help you take your notes as you're going through that video in that video we also did some questions as well so for you, you can go ahead and answer those questions and then go and uh, use that same video as a memorandum to see what if what you have answered is in accordance to what i how i have answered it and the way we handle the memorandum of that video Secondly, we also did the topic of the business cycle. In the business cycle, we covered the uh, flow of the business cycle. Uh, we covered the phases. We covered the types of the business cycle. We covered the diagram of the business cycle itself. Now, one more thing that I would want you to take note of as you are going to study your uh, topic of business cycle is for you in your notes to also make sure that you include the information on GDP. We, I can't remember if we covered it in that video, but if you know how to do the business cycle itself, that's where I know that's where I am confident that you'll be able to master that topic. But if you want those additional marks where we are now separating a distinction from just the past, make sure that you also cover your GDP. With the circular flow, that topic that you need to make sure that you include in there as you're studying is the topic of the multiplier. I still can't remember if in that video we covered it, but if we didn't, you should also make sure that you include questions on the multiplier. By the way, even if we didn't discuss a, the, a, a certain aspect of a topic under a video, for example, under the circular flow, we may have not dis discussed a multiplier, but if you have a multiplier question, Go to that video in the comment section of that video. Leave me that question there. Do the same thing with your public sector as well as your foreign sector. Anything that pertains to those topics but we did not cover in the video but it's still related to that topic. Go to that video in the comment section of that video. Leave me that question and we will get to it. So let's look at in detail what you can expect out of your section A. We have already discussed that in your section A you're going to have only one question. It's question one and it is compulsory. Um, it's divided into 1.1, 1.2 up to 1.3. All of those 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3 are going to be different things. So now look at 1.1. In 1.1 usually it starts with a multiple choice question. This multiple choice question consists of five questions. In these five questions you can expect that all of those four topics we just looked at will be covered. So there will be one topic on secular flow, one on business cycle, one on public sector as well as one on a... Um, foreign exchange market obviously one of the topics will repeat themselves the same thing applies here with 1.2 you will see that in 1.2 we have changed the format of the question into a matching column in this matching column you will see that again we have covered at least one thing from every single one of those topics so you need to make sure that when you are answering section for the sake of section a you have covered and mastered all four of those topics because if you skip one of them that means starting with question one you're going to have where you have hiccups and if you mess up a matching column you know that you mess up one of them it can affect the rest of them then the last format of a question in question one will be the one where you have to 
um, fill in um, read a description and then give a term next to the description so it's a question of concepts and terms are you able to describe are you able to know what term is in relation to what has been described in that question what you the only thing you have to do here is you write next to 3.1.3.1 and write the term of what is a small initial increase in spending which reduces proportionately larger increase in aggregate of national income so that th that word you just write it next to that description so that's what we mean by a term or a concept type of question then we move on to section b when you open up your section B, this is where you are first going to be required to choose one question. So your section B is going to have only two questions. You do not have to answer both of the questions. You have to choose only one of the questions. So you see there at the top, it says section B, answer one of the two questions in this section in your answer book. So in the in this section, you see we have question one and I mean question two and question three. They are both under macro economics because it's term one and we haven't done all of our main topics so we haven't done our economic pursuits and our microeconomics as well so because it's still term one we have only done on basically only one uh, main topic but you are having two different topics out of that so you get to choose um in section B, you will see that out of th in question three and question two, question two and question three, the questions are in a similar format. The similar format meaning you are going to have one question where is a table that you are studying a table or you're studying numbers, figures, a figure uh, question. So this one is in relation to the GDP. This is the topic of a business cycle. So that is a one kind of a top uh, of a format where your question can look like it can be in a form of a table form or it can be any typographical maybe a bar graph or a pie chart then we also have another format where is a case study meaning you're going to have an extract that you are going to read through and then in that extract they are going to answer that they're going to ask you the questions related to that extract as well as the questions related to the topic of the extract meaning the a uh, question may not be in the extract itself, but because the extract is in relation to GDP, that means they can ask you any other question relating to the business cycle. Similar thing, you can also have a type of format where we have a cartoon. So in that cartoon, you see it says South Africa's foreign sector. So it's a go going to be a question about the topic of foreign sector. It doesn't necessarily need to be the things that are happening in the cartoon itself, but it's going to be in relation to the uh, topic of the foreign sector. Similarly, the question of the foreign sector can also come to you in a form of graphs. You know that in economics, we have graphs. So in the foreign sector, we have the foreign exchange market graph. When we are looking at the circular flow, you would have the circular flow diagram. In the business cycle, you would have the business cycle diagram. So this is a, uh, a graphical question and then you're going to have to answer the questions related to the graphs mostly with those ones they rely on your ability to be able to interpret the graph so once again all of those topics are go we have already made videos on every single one of them starting with the secular flow the business cycle the public sector as well as the foreign exchange markets in these videos again we have already touched questions but if you have any other questions related to them go back to that specific video leave me that question in the comment section so then let's move on to section c section c we know that it is an essay so in your match test you will be required to answer one essay question there is a misconception where people think that because it's much i'm not going to be required to answer a, a, an essay question no, you will be required to answer an essay question. There will be two questions. You are going to have to choose from one of them. You see that it says answer any one of the two questions in this section in your answer book. Your essay question must still follow the essay structure. There are some schools I know where 
uh, you have, would be struggling to find an economics teacher or your teacher wouldn't have gotten to a point where he taught you she, he or she taught you the essay structure it's not an essay unless it follows an essay structure so if you are uh, curious as to what my essay structure is supposed to look like again go back to those videos and you will see that we have covered everything we need to so in this question paper they had question four it's still macroeconomics question four wanted you to discuss in detail the new economic paradigm in soothing of the cycles what cycles this is the topic of business cycle so we also covered this i'm pretty sure in that video there's probably even a question where we answered it as a essay question. So go back to the video of the business cycle and you will see wh how we answered this question or what we said about the new economic paradigm. If we answered it as an essay, that would be even a bonus for you. But if we didn't, there is a lesson in that video that I did where... The, in terms of answering it as an essay, basically you are just going to be doing a copy and paste. What I said in that video, if you can repeat it in answering this essay, then you will be sorted because it's basically the same information. Then in question five, we are still under macroeconomics and this one wants you to dis discuss in detail the macroeconomic objective of the state. What is the state? It is the public sector. You would have known this if you have studied or you went through the video of the public sector with us. We talked about how the state, it can be called the state, it can be called the government, but it all essentially just means the public sector. It also says how can the public sector failure uh, negatively affect the economy of South Africa. In that video, we also discussed reasons for public sector failure. So if you go through that video, you will be able to answer this question. Again, it's a matter of copy and paste. Everything that I have mentioned in there about, copy, about public sector failure, if you put it in this additional part, you should be able to answer that question as well as the objectives the main part there is looking for objectives i discussed objectives i even gave you the headings of each objective so if you write it in that exact same format that i gave in that video then you would have answered this question I have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below